Hi there everyone, I'm Bill. And I'm Elizabeth. <laughs> and today we want to talk about the pros and cons of living in a tiny house. We've been in this house for, what, seven, eight months? About eight months now, yeah. And uh, we've still got a lot to learn, I'm sure, but we've already l experienced an awful lot we wanted to talk to you about. So we made a little cheat sheet here so we make sure we uh, remember everything we want to talk about. You know, one of the things I wanted to say was that um, I have found that what I thought um, about living in a tiny house, a lot of it, I was right, but you learn a lot when you're actually doing it. Yeah. And we've been in here long enough now, and we've really been putting some thought into the things that have been really good about it, and then some of the things that are challenging. So, The first thing, the most obvious thing, is the finances. Um, it's much cheaper to live in a tiny house than it is in a full-size house. And uh, the, that allows several things. One is that it allows uh, it'll it'll fit into a sm into a smaller income like us. We were we were living in a big house and we had three rental properties and we owned our own business. And in the, I was a builder. And in the crash of 08, we lost everything. Um, we lost the business. We lost all the houses because all my renters went unemployed at the same time that that I did. Yeah. So we ended houses up flipped upside down. We yeah. ended up with trying to survive on just Elizabeth's income. And um, <clears throat> that didn't work very well. And yeah. So we lost all the houses, and at the end of that big debacle, we ended up with just enough cash to buy this little property here. Yeah. And so with our smaller income. And well, and you know, when you started, um, when you finally were able to find work again driving the truck, um, I had stroke. Right. And I was a little longer able to work because I used to make a you know, good income as a teacher. Thank God we didn't both end up out of work at exactly the same time, but we certainly had a drastic cut in income. Yeah, yeah. so not long after I went back to work as a truck driver, she had her stroke and she hasn't really been able to work much since. So our income is, is smaller than it used to be, and for, the, for us, it works well living in a place that's a lot uh, cheaper to live in. Yeah, yeah. Um, including, um, the, just to mention, including the fact that since it is so small, um, you know, even if you own a place outright, you pay taxes, um, and it tends to make taxes much less. So that overall is another real benefit. And, and the other thing is that it can allow you to become debt-free. Um, we are debt-free because we ended up pulling it together enough cash out of all the houses that we had, which wasn't much, but enough to buy this little property with this little trailer on it. But... Um, <clears throat> Since you can get into a tiny house for ten or fifteen thousand dollars, twenty thousand at the most, maybe, um, is there's a very real possibility that you'll be able to be completely debt free. And you know, uh, we've realized that um, in our culture, when people think of getting out of debt, they think of getting out of credit card debt, um, which is, of course, a very good idea. But we're talking about really being debt free, um, where your mortgage is paid for. You don't make car payments, so your insurance for your car is going to be probably less. Um, and so, you know, we are at a point now where um, we will sometimes have medical bills that are not covered by insurance that I have to make payments on. But other than that, um, we everything's paid for. And, um, and so when we talk about being debt-free, we're not just saying that we're left with nothing, but people often think of your house payment as an expense that you have to have or your car payment is an expense you have to have. No, they're debts. And um, not having those helps so much. And we, we are not able, we'll talk more about this later, but we are not able to save constantly so that the next time we have to come up with a vehicle, um, we will not have to have debt for that either. Hmm. Um, yeah, I want to say that we <coughs> we are not in the, in the tiny house because we have to be. We're in the tiny house because we want to be. Yeah, well, we start out because we have to be. Yeah, we first <laughs> moved in because it was a necessity. We lost our house and we didn't know what else to do. The original plan was we were going to just renovate this little trailer uh, to make it livable for a couple of years until we could afford to put a good, nice-sized mobile home on here. But now that we're in here, we realize we really like it. We really like being debt-free. Going into a mobile home would be would mean putting a mortgage on it again, and we're just not going to do that. Right. Um, because we're living here, even with my reduced income, um, with her not working, we uh, we still have now the money that we need to 
uh, you know, to do whatever comes up. And for the first time in our life, we're not scraping together to try to make payments on, on everything every month. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really freeing. Um, it's it's a really excellent feeling. Yeah, it really is. Um, the uh, being able to to pay a bill. Well, we're going to be talking more about that later. But to be able to pay a bill. Um, when it comes up where you can get a discount because you're paying it early rather than scrambling to make sure you're not paying penalties um, on some of these uh, periodic bills that everybody has taxes and all sorts of things um, it's it's wonderful it is really wonderful um, and uh, with this also we're talking about uh, a small very tiny home allowing you to become debt free it also makes it so much more feasible like we just were saying that you can stay debt free and that is a decision you have to make um, and we find it very worth it, but the simplicity of our expenses now makes that possible for us um, As long as we're careful and that I appreciate also yeah. Should we move on? Yeah, we'll move on The next one cleaning and maintenance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh goodness. I mean I um, If I want to do a real deep cleaning of our little teeny place here I can go through and I'm talking move stuff out of the way and vacuum behind and you ought to see the cute little vacuum cleaner we got. You gotta have the right tools, but it works. But I can get this place like super cleaned in like an hour. And you know, compared to our 2,000 square foot house or whatever, you know, uh, that's just a whole different thing. And I appreciate it. You know, a lot. something we've discovered is that you really have to be diligent on a, on a daily basis to keep it clean. Oh, absolutely. Because if you don't, it gets trashed so fast because it's so small. You can't even move if you. Yes. Every stuff is yes. everywhere. But if you if allow it to get that far, and then you really apply yourself to clean it, you, like she said, you can clean the whole thing in a half hour. <laughs> yeah, it's so. just you don't want it to become cluttered. You don't want it to, to not be on top of it because you won't be able to live that way. But when you need to straighten it out, it can straighten out quickly, and that is that's awesome. You know, for instance. Um, when I do a load of laundry, and I'm so grateful to have a washer and dryer in this place, if I do a load of laundry, um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about how this has caused good personal growth, um, but I've got to get those clothes folded um, and put them away because they're either going to be in a chair and I can't sit or they're going to be on the bed and I can't go to bed. And so it forces us to keep up with stuff and do it in small increments and um, it tends to make actually the jobs easier but you just stay diligently with them and um, it, the cleaning can be pretty uh, a lot less time involved because you're doing it in small bits and you just keep up with it and it's, it's small so it's neat um, you have to have the correct tools we've got the cutest little vacuum cleaner you ever saw um, but if you with the right stuff and a good system set up it's easy it's easy maintenance now grounds maintenance yeah I know that you can have a tiny house on on 10 acres of beautiful land, but yes. mo most people don't. Uh, the property that we own here that our tiny house is on... And we own it. <laughs> ...is a little lot, 50 feet by 100 feet. And it takes me about 30 to 40 minutes to, to mow it, whereas I'm used to having something that takes several hours to mow. And our little driveway, I... I still have a great big snow blower because I used to have a huge driveway. Yep. That snow blower is going to take me about five minutes to do my driveway in the winter. So I really appreciate the reduced outside maintenance as well. Absolutely. Um, if if you need to fix something, um, it's going to cost less and it's going to be simpler. If for some reason we have to replace the whole roof, uh, it's going to be a smaller roof. Um, if things need to be done, it's just not going to cost as much because there just isn't as much to work with. And, um, and you just, just stay on top of it, you know. Um, one thing that I am really enjoying about living in a very small place is that I'm finding that the decorating that I can do is fun. It's like a, it's like a playhouse because I would never have the money to do major decorating. But this place is little and cute. And I made the curtains and I picked stuff I liked. I um, Simple things like... I got a little bit more expensive knobs for my cupboards that are right up here, and they're beautiful, brass, shiny. It looks elegant. Um, but I only had to buy four. I can afford that. And so just when you're fixing things up, um, when, you're, when you're decorating as a woman, um, it's small and it's fun, and I can really do, good, do fun things with it. And if I change my mind, it doesn't cost much later on to do something different. And I, I like that. Um, upgrading. Um, 
being able to know that um, we can put in a good faucet in the kitchen sink that's going to work really well. Um, we don't have a ton of things that could be upgraded and we got money set aside and we can do these kind of projects and so that what we do have we can try to make it a good quality and um, I appreciate that. That's much harder to do in a great big house. Mm. So I hope I, I hope that made sense how I said that. Um, one of the things is that I that I discovered with this and we'll be moving on here is that you, you're forced to have only what you love the most and what you really need. And so I'm finding that I'm surrounded by things that I love the most, and that has been a really good thing. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, hon. Should we move on? Yeah. Okay, Go simplicity. Um, our new motto in life is live simple, live free. Yeah. And it really is true that a simple life is a life of freedom. Um, you know, so, so many people in this country for so long have been striving for bigger and better and more expensive and bigger houses, bigger cars, you know, all these kinds of things and it adds, it, yeah, it might be fun to drive a, a nicer car but it adds so much extra stress, you know, to make sure that you have the money to pay for all that stuff and all the, all the extra maintenance and all the extra insurance, you know, experiences and people are where the true wealth is. That's right. Not in things, not in stuff. Uh, especially when that stuff comes with big payments. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have discovered that I don't have to own something to enjoy it. And that feeling like you've got the freedom to go and see something and experience it. I Personally, I love Victorian houses. I think they're gorgeous. I love huge wraparound porches. But I'm at a point in my life now, it's like, if I see one, I can enjoy looking at it. But I don't have to live there. And I don't have to clean it. And I don't have to maintain it. I can just enjoy it, and so um, we can we can enjoy things, but we don't have to own them. It doesn't have to be in my own personal home. My tiny yard is plenty. If I want to enjoy something bigger, I can go out and see it somewhere, you know. And um, uh, it, when you can, when you know you can pay your bills, um, there's so much less stress, and you don't have to own something that's going to be hard to pay for. You don't have to do that. Um, and Bill really pointed this out. A simple life helps you keep your priorities straight. You know, um, and I'm so much more focused now on um, just enjoying people. And if I see something at a store that is so pretty, I'm finding myself thinking, wow, that's so pretty. I can really enjoy that, but I'm glad I'm not going to have to dust it later. Mm -hmm. I don't have to own it. You know, you know live simple, live free. Is, is just about the freedom that comes from learning how to be content with what you have instead of always striving for more. Always, you know, coveting your neighbor's car or whatever. I keep talking about cars, but you, you know <laughs> They're important I'm, to people. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, they're important to a lot of people. Not that there's anything wrong with a car, but just to learn to live to be content with what you have. And living in a tiny house really is a, kind of like a tool to help us do that. Because yes. if we if we see something we really want and we we buy it, we don't have any place to put it. Yeah. The fact is that, and this is a good thing, and it's also going to come up under cons, you know, with our pros and cons. If something comes in, something has to go out. That's just the reality of it. Yep. You know, <laughs> I play electric bass in our uh, band at church, in our worship band at church. Yeah, we're both musicians. And I've never owned the bass, I've used the church's bass, and uh, this is the Saturday after Thanksgiving, and yesterday, Black Friday, was the first time ever that we went out to shop on Black Friday yeah. because I was able to fi buy a, a five-string electric bass, a Fender bass. Uh, We've the, been saving for it I've for like a year and a half. Yeah, I've been saving for it for a while. <laughs> the point is, the reason I'm telling you this is, you know, she just said, if you bring something in, you got to have something to go, else to go out. Well, I didn't have any other base to go out, so <laughs> right. all of a sudden I had this base and we couldn't figure out where to put it. We have to think about that. And if you look right here, it just leans up against the wall right next to my recliner with about an inch to spare. And that's the only <laughs> place I could find to put it. You know, so... You can't stick bases out in that cold sunroom. It's bad for them. Right. It's too cold out there. So my point is, anything that you get, anything you bring in, has to be planned. Yes, thoughtfully planned. Thoughtfully planned. You can't yeah. let it just be uh, spontaneous, you know. And then you bring it home, and it won't, you know, it won't fit in your living room. Right. Actually, that's really so. important to consider. You know.
Did you want to share this, hon? Oh, yes. You know, learning how to be content with what you've got. The Bible talks about that in Philippians 4, uh, starting in verse 11. It says, I am not saying this because I'm in, I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or living in want. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Just to learn how to be content with where you're at. And for us, we just look to Jesus to support us and to supply what we need and to be happy with that and to be content with that. Yes. And, you know, the tiny house is one of the tools that we use to help us be content because we can't yeah. we can't bring in more. <laughs> that's right, that's right. It's actually ended up being that it that leads actually into the next category which I've just called personal growth. Um just learning to be able to be content with um things very different than it used to be. And that's been good for us. Um we are so crowded together here. This is about as far as we ever sit apart from each other because we've managed, by the grace of God, to have two recliners in this place. By the way, these two recliners and two small desk chairs are the only place we have to sit. <laughs> in the whole place. I mean, if I sit on the bed, I have to climb up on the stool to get up there. So for me to sit here, yeah, there's, there's uh, you know, just a few limited places for us to sit. So, um, we, in fact, we, we've had to be increasingly courteous with each other and patient with each other. We have to do a lot of waiting for the other person to get done and get out of the way, um, being aware that someone might need to get through there. You know, just you, you really learn how to be, uh, you know, courteous with each other and respectful and, um, you know, work, work it out together because we are in a small place together. Um, but it, that's been good. It reminds me of being on the tandem bicycle. There's a saying, you know, when you're riding a tandem, um, that if your marriage... Whichever direction your marriage is going, it'll get there faster. And when you live in a very tiny place together, you really learn to, um, you know, work things out together. And um, we do fine. <laughs> and, we, and we do ride a tandem bicycle. Yes, we, we do. And we do live in a tiny house, and our marriage is still getting better. Yes, it is. <laughs> and it's going to be 38 years next summer. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, if I'm going to be in a tiny place with somebody, I'm glad it's him. Another thing is I feel like that we have become more deliberate and mindful um, in um, being on top of our life, noticing things, paying attention. Um, I said before that it's a blessing to have only the things you love the most or need the most around you. I've had to be really mindful of what do I really need on a daily basis um, and be deliberate about my choices and deliberate about what I do. And that's been a very healthy thing. I think we make wiser choices. Um, we cannot have any mindless debt. We can't have mindless acquisitions. And so we've really learned to see the value in things and make choices. And I think that this kind of a life has forced us to become even better at simply making choices. And that's been good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that it for the pros? I think that was okay. it on the pros, and that's a lot so, of good stuff. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of good reasons to live in a tiny house, and we just absolutely love it. Yeah. Um, but there are some difficulties as well, and we didn't want to just paint a rosy picture yeah. and, and gloss over the over the difficult stuff. We really want to be honest and realistic about this. So now we'll, we'll talk about some of the cons, some the of cons. the some of the difficult times. As I mentioned just a minute ago, this is the Thanksgiving weekend. Weekend, yes. And uh, this is actually our first big holiday since we moved into the tiny house. Tell and you about. have to, you have to understand. I am so oh my goodness! I'm so such a happy grandma. I mean, family stuff is incredibly important to me, and I have been the grandma house where people come um, quite often for Thanksgiving, unless we're visiting with someone else's house. Um, Christmas is really important to me, so this has been a major adjustment for me for the holidays. Um, I. I, especially because in the sunroom right now is kind of a construction zone a little bit because of stuff we've got to do before winter. I can't put up a Christmas tree. I do not have anywhere to put it. Now I'm going to try to see if I can figure out a way to do a really tiny one. And maybe by next year I might put a Christmas tree, an artificial one out in the sunroom that will be really cold out there, but at least it would be pretty through the glass. But 
this year I'm going to put up a few lights and some decorations, but I can't do my usual holiday stuff. There just isn't room. That doesn't mean I can't make it special, but it's just going to change. Um, I can't do the big family gatherings. I can't do Thanksgiving. Um, I cooked in my tiny little stove. I did cook some of the food to take over to visit with family, and we were able to get together with family, and that's what's important. But I can't be the place anymore, and that's a big, a big change for me. Uh, family coming, family coming to visit. You know, um, uh, my son's kids came up and spent some time with us, and it was nice weather, so they could sleep out in the sunroom, and it was really fun. That was this past summer. This past summer, yep. But if I have very much family come, I don't have room for them. And, and they so, can't sleep out in the sunroom now. It's too no, cold. It's too cold. I love that sunroom, but it is really only okay in spring and the not hot days of summer and the early fall. Other than that, it's too cold and it's too hot. And so um, we've got to be realistic about that. Um, I had a big get-together here last summer uh, with a bunch of friends from church. We had a barbecue. We had 20 people here, but it was out in the yard under this really nice tree. And people kind of came through here just enough to grab some of the things we were keeping cool or maybe use the bathroom. But we had to make sure it was it was outside. Um, I can't have big gatherings here. There literally isn't room. So especially in the winter for us, because um, we can't really use the sunroom, um, we have very limited space for people. And that's been a big change for me. We could have a couple over for dinner. But if they have any kids, it, it's really difficult. Right. And even to have a couple over, unless we can use a sunroom, um, it, we just have to be very creative. We and would that, all be sitting on, you know, on our desk chairs and balancing our plates on our lap. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. And I just, the last house I lived in had a beautiful big great room, and um, I'm glad I enjoyed it as much as I did, um, because I, it's gonna, it's changed now, you know. So that's okay. I still get to see people. I can love on them. I just can't be the hostess as easily. Um, and the whole idea of spreading room for us, especially when we can't use the sunroom. Mm -hmm. I'll let Bill talk about that just yeah, a little bit. Yeah, you know, like I said a minute ago, these two chairs are really the only places that we have to sit. And we have the TV mounted on the wall right across over there. Now, we don't have cable television. We, yeah, haven't, we, had, we haven't had actual TV in our house for 30 years. But, yeah, we don't use actual TV. But we have Netflix and we get DVDs and stuff like that. Yeah, we can you know put the internet on, put YouTube on, stuff like that. So the problem becomes if one of us wants to watch something on Netflix and the other one wants to read a book or something like that, I personally I can't read when there's something on the on the right, tube. Right. Right. So my only option in the summer I can go out and sit in the sunroom and read out there, but in the winter my only option is to go into the back bedroom and lay down on the bed and read. Well, I can do that for a little while, but for any kind of period of time it's it's uncomfortable. Right. So we've just had to work that out. You know, we we like she said we don't have any spreading room. I mean, here we are, you this know, is we us. have no right. room. Now, we do pretty well with that. I know some couples would only just be on each other's throats and yeah. get worse and worse, but... We, we, do, we do real well. Yeah, we do real well with that. But it is definitely an issue. Well, in today's high-tech world, I also can take... Um, I have a little Kindle Fire, and if I want to watch something, I can put headphones on and watch it there so he can read. Or if he wants to be on the computer and the sound is going to distract the other one, um, we can use headphones with the computer. In fact, our, a pair of our headphones just kick the bucket, so we really need to try to replace them. But, um, you know, we don't always want to do the same thing at the same time, but you just have to figure out ways to make it work, you know. But you have to be able to get along. I mean, you've got to be realistic about that. Um, and as I move on here, I know people talk about the benefit of having fewer possessions, but I want to be realistic about this. You have to accept the loss of a lot of your possessions. And you have to take that seriously. And people can talk about how wonderful that is, but when you genuinely have to do it, it's not its not an easy thing. It really is not an easy thing. You know, a lot of the stuff you have in your house, you really don't need. Right. And even at that, it can still be traumatic to get rid of it as you prepare to move into a tiny house. Yeah. But you really don't need it. But there are some things that, though you won't necessarily use on a regular basis, they have very nostalgic Right. You know, uh, I mean, for us, we're older, I think, than most people that live in a tiny house. And, yeah, you know, I'll, be, I'll be 60 my next birthday. I watch YouTube, and most of the people, it seems, that are living in tiny houses are in their mid-20s, and they don't have kids, or they got infants, and they, you know, not to minimize the trauma they had to go through to downsize, but they don't have, 
you know, 30 years worth of accumulated um, nostalgic stuff. Right. You know, and like for instance, I, I was in the army band and I was in Germany and the band traveled all over uh, Europe yep. in the summer playing Stadtfests, uh, city festivals, playing in beer tents as part of our uh, job of public relations between the, the U.S. Army and the, the German people. So every time I went to a different town to play Stadtfest, I would buy a commemorative beer stein that would have the name of the town. I have one that says Knetzgau, 1200 years. Yeah, this was, little it, town of Knetzgau is yes. the 1200 year anniversary. Yeah, it was the 1200th birthday of that town. Yeah. My so goodness. So I've got dozens of these mugs and they're all in a box because we have nowhere to put them. Yeah. Yeah. But how can I get rid of them? They're, it's too. It's full of too many memories, you yeah. know. So there are all kinds of yeah. little issues like that that you just really, it's a, it's a difficult thing and you have to deal with it somehow. Having had a chance to live in Europe and having a lot of interesting travel experiences, our home really had some very interesting things up in it, you know, um, that I just thought was, were really interesting and, and fun uh, topics of discussion when people will come visit because we've been able to have a chance to live in a lot of places. Um, and oh my goodness, in our family, the heirlooms. And right before we had to move into this tiny house, we've had some deaths in our family, and we inherited some incredible heirlooms. I'll give you one example. I was going through a box of things when we were trying to clear up after um, after his mother's death recently. And um, as I went through there, I found a drawing in there, a framed drawing from someone in his family that is from 1840. It's a little, like, watercolor drawing thing, and it literally was done in 1840. Um, what an incredible heirloom and um, carvings and just so we've really had to start passing them down passing inheritance along and then figuring out responsible ways to deal with some of these inheritances because we just don't have room in our house and we don't have we have limited storage rooms so that took a lot of, of thought um, heirlooms uh, walls of family photos and people go oh well just scan them and put them on your computer and well, that's great. I mean, in fact, I have a little, a little thing I can put up on the wall that has a bunch of pictures that come up on the little computer screen, and that's nice. But you have to just do it, and there's a lot of that that it just used to be so much simpler just to put a picture up on the wall. I can't do that anymore. Um, we are book hogs. We are such bibliophiles. It's incredible. And with both of us together, we had to go through and find places to get rid of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books. We had beautiful bookshelves built all over the place in our house, and um, we had to go through. And some of those, I'm not sure, we had we hung on to some because I'm not sure how we could replace them, even in today's days of Kindles and, and Nooks. Some of them we just really didn't know how to replace or couldn't afford to replace. That was probably one of the most painful things that we had to do was get rid of the books because... Yeah. Neither one of us have ever thrown a book away when we read it. You know, we'll save it and read it again three or four years, five years later. And so we I read stuff over like and over. Like she said, we had hundreds of books, hundreds and hundreds of books. Yeah. Um, we we had a free thing with, um, we're oldie moldies here, so we had a free thing with Blockbuster for free DVDs for years. And we had such a collection of really cool DVDs. We had a whole wall full of DVDs and we had to get rid of all of them. Of course, now most of the, those movies are available on Netflix. Right. The thing that is, not all though, of them. you got to realize you won't necessarily find everything on Netflix. You won't necessarily find everything where you can put it up on, on um, streaming or even find it on YouTube or whatever. You can't assume that. And so, um, you know, I, I have had to go through, and there's a few movies that I would love to be able to watch again that I've got to find a place to put, but it's a very small amount compared to what we've, we've you know, gotten rid of. Um, if something comes in, something has to go out. <laughs> Um, you cannot be a collector, and boy, you cannot be a hoarder in any way, shape, or form. So you've got to be really realistic about that. Um, and it's okay. It works out okay, but it has not been easy. And we still are trying to figure out what to do with some of the things. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not an easy process. And you don't want to be irresponsible with something that could be precious for future generations, but we just can't keep stuff. So we've had to get that figured out. You know, and we're both musicians. My goodness, that's another thing. Figuring out where to put my piano, Bill's guitars, the brass instruments, stuff that we are using and we don't want to get rid of, but we can't let them be damaged. So it's been creative, very creative process to try to take good care of the instruments that we still use. So, and that kind of takes me into my last category in cons. 
is that um, this is a good thing, but you got to take it seriously. You must be organized. Um, you, you can't just do things haphazardly without thought. All of a sudden, everything that we purchase, use, do, plan, our, our, our everyday life has to have some thought and planning in it. And, um, you know, <laughs> you can't just blow that off. It's um, actually kind of like living inside of a Rubik's Cube. Yeah. Because everything, you have to move them all at once. You can't just kind of move stuff around. And you've got to plan that very carefully. Yeah. Yeah. Because if we move something too much, you won't be able to get through the room. You've got to have it thought out. And, you know, we are, we're not so minimalist that we don't have basic possessions. I can still cook in my kitchen pretty normally. Um, I've got, uh, you know, normal things around. But I've got to make sure that I know where I'm going to put them. And you can't just dump something somewhere. There isn't any room to do that. So everything takes thought and planning. I'd say papers are some of the, the biggest issues. Every single paper and mail, mail papers. I'm on Medicare now because of the stroke. Oh my goodness, the paperwork. Every single paper that comes into this house has to either be um, filed um, what I, what I say? They, every single paper has to be sorted, filed, put away, or destroyed. And you, you can't let that pile up. And I'm trying to take care of all this stuff for Bill's dad also. And um, so i just keeping things organized. You know, important papers still have to be preserved. You still have to have files. Um, you know, there's certain you, things you just can't get rid of. You've got to properly put them away. And we used to have an office in the in the house for that. A regular it was a, office. A full-size room, a full-size yes. bedroom that we had as an office. And we had filing cabinets in there and a couple of desks. And, yeah. you know, we still we were able to, to squeeze one desk in here, but now it's multi-use. Yes. So And I can't let stuff accumulate we, on it. Yeah, we've period. got to keep it clean or you can't use it. And so right. trying to deal with all the, the daily paperwork from the minutia of life yeah. can be a real challenge in such a small place. And you, ha you can't just get rid of stuff that you have to keep, but you can't let stuff accumulate. So it just takes diligence. You have to stay a system. Um, you, can't, you can't just let your guard down. If you don't stay on top of it, you'll drown in stuff. Um, so, you know, with your everyday, where you put things, how you do your routine, laundry must be folded and put away. There's nowhere to just dump it. Um, so all that, you just you got to stay on top of it. And, um, of course, you know, as far as the laundry, most people, most tiny houses do not have a washer and dryer in there. They have to go to a laundromat, and so they usually fold it in the laundromat before they bring it home. <laughs> but that we, mean... were, we were blessed to be able to actually fit a washer and dryer in here, um, and you can watch our tiny house tour yeah. to see that. But a washer, dryer, and a, and a dishwasher, we actually fit into this 250 square foot house. Yeah. So. Well, and I'm so grateful for them. I, I'm just so grateful. Um, but even if someone has to go to the laundromat, you better have somewhere to put your laundry to accumulate it, to take it to the laundromat. In other words, you know, the day-by-day -day right. things have to be organized right. or it'll drive you crazy. Right. If something bugs you when you do it, it's going to be driving you out of your mind six months later. So you've got to put careful thought into just what I call the KISS method. Keep it simple, sweetie. Figure out ways to solve problems because in a tiny house, your tolerance level will be very small because there's no way to just... Uh, if something is irritating, believe me, it'll be more irritating when you're concentrated into a tiny area. So you just have to, you know, you, you got to stay on top of it. Um, and that's true then, too. The last thing I mentioned here, I have here, is that in terms of your finances, in terms of budgeting, you've got to stay on top of it. Um, if you're going to have the financial freedom and not have to deal with debt, then you better stay on top of paying the bills and setting money aside for the stuff that's going to come up a little bit at a time. We save money every week toward the taxes, our, our water bill, that come, our sewer bill that comes up due that we don't have any choice about in this area. Um, you know, my, my small POA dues, which cover my trash, my water, the road maintenance, it's a great small POA due, but I have to have the money for it. So um, this is all good stuff, staying organized, but you have to realize that if you don't like doing that or you don't know how to do it, you got to deal with that because it's, it has to be part of life. Mm -hmm. So and that was really the end of what we had on the cons list, and yeah, I think none so. of those are overwhelming. <laughs> so if you're still with us... <laughs> yeah. Thanks for hanging in there. We've just tried to be very this real. This turned out to be a much longer video than I expected, but as you can tell, we're really speaking from the heart here and the things that we've experienced. 
there's a lot of good about living in a tiny house. There's also a few difficult things. Yeah. But overall, we've decided to stay because the positives far outweigh the negatives yes. as far as we're concerned. Yeah, this has gone from being something we were forced into to something that we are happy to make as a lifestyle choice. Right. Very much so. So yeah. if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like down below and, <laughs> and, and subscribe if you haven't already. Yeah. And as always, live simple. And live free. Amen. Thank you. God thanks, bless you. Thanks for watching. Yeah, God bless you guys. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>